In this demo, we will learn about the importance of sample rate in interconnect simulations with multiple sources. The sample rate of the optical and electrical signals in an interconnect simulation is determined by the source properties. For example, the ONA acts as the optical source in this frequency domain simulation, and the sample rate of the optical signal is defined by the frequency range property of the ONA. Right now we only have the ONA in our simulation, and the frequency domain property of the ONA defines the range over which the frequency domain simulation will run. The number of frequency points available in the calculated transmission is set by the number of points parameter. We have set this to 1000 points to ensure that the peaks in the transmission spectrum can be properly resolved. Sure enough, when we run the simulation, we can see that the simulated transmission spectrum has a range of 1 terahertz and that the peaks are nicely resolved. Now we'll see what happens when we add an electrical source to our circuit. We will now edit the ring and turn it into a ring modulator driven by a DC electrical source. To do this, we will first add an optical modulator measured element from the element library. It can be found in the modulators folder inside the optical subfolder. To place this element inside the ring, we will first break the connection between waveguide 2 and waveguide coupler 1 by selecting the connection and pressing delete. We'll then connect port 1 of the modulator to port 4 of waveguide coupler 1 and port 2 of the modulator to port 1 of waveguide 2. Next, we will add the DC source from the source folder and electrical subfolder in the element library. Connect the output of the DC source to the modulation port of the optical modulator. We will now set the properties of the optical modulator measured element. If we assume that 80% of the ring is active, then we can set the length parameter as 0.8 times 2 pi times the radius recalling that the ring has a radius of 40 microns. The next step is to set the measurement data for the modulator. The optical modulator measured element is used in places where measurement data are available for the modulator. The measurement data can either be in the form of effective index or in the form of absorption and phase as a function of bias voltage. As we can see, the element comes populated with data to make sure that the change in index is enough to give us a significant shift in the transmission spectrum, we will edit this data. For the DC source, we will keep the amplitude to zero for now. Note that the sample rate of the DC source is set to be equal to the sample rate property of the root element by default using the expression. The sample rate is currently set to 1.6 terahertz. If we run the simulation as it is, we can see that the simulation fails and gives us an error message that says that the sample rate of the optical signal at port 1 of the modulator is wrong. This is because the sample rate of the electrical signal coming from the DC source is set to 1.6 terahertz, while the sample rate of the ONA is set to 1 terahertz. During the preliminary parameter extraction step, the optical modulator tries to calculate the S matrix by considering both the optical and electrical signals, but fails since the sample rate is different between the two. The simplest way to resolve this problem is to set the frequency range of the ONA to be equal to the sample rate of the root element using an expression similar to the DC source. The advantage of setting the frequency range this way is that now if we want to change the frequency range of the ONA to calculate the transmission spectrum over a larger range, we only have to change it once in the root element and the sample rate of both the ONA and the DC source will get updated. Running the simulation again, we see that the error has been resolved and the simulation finishes successfully. Let's plot the absolute value squared of the transmission. We will now change the bias applied to the modulator to minus 5 volts and see how it changes the spectrum. Let's plot the transmission in the same window. We can see that by applying a bias voltage, we have shifted the transmission spectrum of the ring modulator.